Welcome back to Sunrise Daily. We're we'll continuing our focus, coming to you live as a matter of fact from Uyo in Akwai Bomb State. We're we'll joined now by the Speaker of the House of Assembly, Honorable Samuel Bikon. Thank you for coming out this morning. Well, yes, there's this. First and foremost, we have to just talk about this. It's uh, making the rounds, and you know how Akwai Bomb people like to write a lot uh, on some of these matters. They are asking, first of all, about this pension matter. What is going on about this? Because someone reading from us actually thinks, is this the case? But now that you're here, tell us, what is this pension bill about? The pension bill for former governors and deputy governors. Actually, uh, just like you said, we're also very amazed at the, the nice about it. The Kwaibum State House of Assembly that I preside over the Fifth Assembly, Christian the People's Assembly, has in the last three years demonstrated clearly it's about commitment to save the people. We are sent the, the mandate of the people, and we've tried to justify that mandate and give confidence to the electorate that there are still some good men and women. And what we did was when we looked at the former law that was in place. First, take note that I want the public to understand that this is not a new law. It's amazing that um, most of the comments has been purely on misinformation and I think to a large extent actual intent to misinform the people because a way to strengthen the existing law. For, for instance, the First Amendment is that there were provisions of drivers, cooks, gardeners, personal aid, security for former governors, which were to be provided. And you understand that at times they may not get the quality of service that they want. So what we did was to monetize those services and allow the former governors and the former deputy governors to actually choose the kind of cooks and staff that they want. Because the window there was that a former governor could ask for a chief from China. And the law says you will provide. And you have no option but to provide. The law as amended by the No, the law, the existing law, the one that existed before the amendment. So what does the new one say? So the new one simply monetizes that aspect so that you can't exceed that money. If you like to bring your chief from Japan, you would like to bring your, your, your chauffeur from America, that's your business. I mean, oh. This is the height that government can pay for that service. What's, if amendment. I may come in here, mm. at, how did you get to the value you placed on this monetizing? Well, the value, what we did was that we, we looked at the current situation. What is an ordinary driver pay? What is an ordinary a regular cook, a, a chef pay, and all of that? So we added all of these up and looked for and arrived at some amount we knew would certainly cover especially when you come to issues of security. There's really no end to what you can spend depending on the situation. So we provided for those windows and all of that and made sure that the sum was such that no matter the situation, it could carry. And if you want something beyond that, then you pay for it. The second amendment, which is really raising most of the furor, is that of the medical bills. In the previous law, there was no ceiling. It simply stated that the government shall provide, shall pay for the medical bills of former governors and former deputy governors. And we found out a little bit too loose. What if there's an abuse? What if someone decides to take advantage of it and keeps bringing bills? What would you do? You have no option than to pay. So we now said no. We must provide a cap. Okay. Whether you're sick, whether your spouse is sick, government cannot spend more than X now. Let me read what I have here and tell us if it's the correct one because so many versions are being circulated I'll out there. That. Uh, concerning the medical allowance, it says here the governor is also entitled to 5 million naira monthly as allowance for domestic aid, while his deputy will be entitled to 2 million naira. Besides, the governor is also entitled to a medical allowance of 100 million naira per year for himself and wife, while the deputy will get a medical allowance to a limit of 
30 million naira per annum. So former governors get this. Is this the case? No, that's not the case. In fact, even in the culture, that, that is uh, uh, wrong. What we have is that in terms of the initial uh, provisions I mentioned earlier, the figure is correct. Maximum five million a month and 2.5 million for deputies. Now, in the medical, uh, the word medical allowance there uh, might not come out really what it means. What it means is that government shall pay medical bills not exceeding 100 million for a former governor and not exceeding 50 million for a former deputy governor. Now, I think what is lost in all of this is the fact that this is not an amount of money government is going to sign up every year for these former uh, officials. No. I, I thought what is lost there is uh, the limit. If we say it shouldn't exceed uh, this, then we shouldn't now be talking about uh, a ceiling. For instance, uh, there must be a, a certain level where you say uh, this amount should get to before you say it has exceeded. So now it means uh, those who are saying this X amount, for instance, 100 million, they're not far from the truth. No, you, you must understand that what we've done is that we've set from one naira to 100 million naira. That is the window. So if you have an ailment that is beyond that, family and so on should have to come in. Because let me give you a typical example. What if you had a, a situation where a former governor presents a bill of 60 million? Four months after, he says he went for a follow-up and presents another bill of, let's say, 40 million for himself, 30 million for his wife. How much is that? And six months after, he says he needed to go for another follow-up. In a year, how much have you spent? And you can't say anything because the law simply says you must pay. Is, is this law, because uh, I don't understand why, uh, well, it's all about Governor Fabio now. Is this when you say, uh, a, mi a minute here, because I, in your language you've been saying former governors. Does this include past governor before the present governor? Because some anticipate that this is done uh, in the twilight of his days in office, because when he leaves, it's his own takeaway pay. So do other governors before himself, are they part of this new law or new amendment, so to speak? Yeah, I think that's part of the issue of people being misinformed. This law has existed before now, saving the interest of former governors and former deputy governors. This amendment is just, like I said, to put a cap, checks and balances, and also find out ways of making sure that they are comfortable. Who are these people? Governor Fabio still has one year in office. The former governors and former deputy governors are beneficiaries. The, the Even during, <coughs> if anyone that, that watched the floor when we passed the bill would have noticed that there was even a direct question to that effect. Does this bill, whereby passing, cover former governors and former deputies? And I clearly stated yes. So it's interactive in nature? Yes. So and before now, those former chief executive of the state have been getting Benefit. the benefits. Yes. And what I, I want to clear this confusion. When we say the laws takes effect from 1st June 2014, it doesn't mean that people will only benefit whoever is in office. In office from no. 2000. What we're simply saying is that these additional provisions that we've brought to bear, these amendments that we've brought to bear, takes effect from 1st June. So a, a clear example is the fact that in May, they wouldn't have the five million, but from June, they now have the five million. But That's what it's about. So all the misrepresentation and misinformation about excluding former governors is wrong.